Hello everyone, Nicholas Thayer here with you, another Ableton tutorial. Uh, and something a little bit different for tu today's tutorial. Um, so I recently released an album, uh, two long form ambient works. They are live recordings of two uh, generative ambient sound installations that I have made. Um, and I thought I'd open up one of those projects today and uh, take a look under the hood and see what is happening with this generative ambient installation. Um, for those of you who are on my Patreon, shout out to all of you supporting me on my Patreon. If you want to check that out, link is in the video description below. Uh, if you're on the Patreon, you can download this whole Ableton project and... Um, uh, play with it. It will include all of the samples, of course, but you can replace the samples with your own things and make your own generative uh, ambient, long-form ambient stuff. So, uh, without further ado, let's take a look under the hood. Um, we see here the Ableton project. These first two channels just recording my microphone and uh, the master output from Ableton, so we don't need to worry about those. I'm just going to stop everything else for now so we can have a peek and, uh, and we can see what's happening. So let's take a look at this first channel, uh, Cello. Uh, this one is still sort of bubbling away in the background. We'll turn you off for now. Yeah, so what I have here, let's take a look at the MIDI clip to begin with. So this MIDI clip, uh, we see a bunch of different notes programmed in, uh, kind of with some degree of regularity, but mostly pretty random. Uh, but the important thing with all of these is the, the chance. So the chance on most of these is down at around 4%, 4%, 4%, 4%. On some of them, uh, we're at 20%. That's these ones that are on the instrument rack. But all the rest of these are down at 4%. So they're really, even though they might uh, they might get played a lot, we can see the, the play bar passing through, but it's just not triggering any of these uh, because the, the chance that they will be triggered. It's so, uh, even with these ones, it's only one out of every five at twenty percent. These ones, it's yeah, whatever that is, four out of every one hundred. My brain can't do the maths right now, but yeah. So, uh, as you can see, it's about to make it through one entire cycle of this clip and not actually trigger any of these. And we're going to make it through without triggering. Come on, come on. <laughs> of course we triggered the last one. So let's have a look at what is happening uh, when these are triggered. So we'll go across. And the way I set this up was in an instrument, uh, in a drum rack. So I made a bunch of cello recordings. Uh, we can see all of those here. I've cut them up into, into very small samples and uh, they're all here. So we have, for instance, this droplets one, which sounds like this. So we can hear that it's uh, it's just a, a cello gesture with some echo and some and some hybrid reverb happening after it. Uh, we have a, a flageolet gesture. Uh, we have some harmonic gestures. Uh, some more harmonic stuff. So you can see that these are all quite short phrases. I'm not going to play all of them. Whale sound again with some echo. Uh, echo after it. Um, so most of these are all very, uh, very short gestures, and they will only happen sort of yeah every, as you saw, not not very often at all, uh, and at random. So the way they interact with all of the other things that are happening is always at random. The last one here is this in uh, an instrument rack inside the drum rack. Uh, so let's open that up and see see what's going on. Um, so first things first, inside this instrument rack, we have uh, the expression control. Now what this does is it generates values based on every incoming MIDI signal. So every time a piece of MIDI uh, comes into the expression control, uh, it outputs based on pitch bend, aftertouch, random, incremental, uh, etc. This plugin looks a little bit different in Ableton 12. This is still in Ableton 11. Uh, but here I've chosen to just, just use random values. So every time it receives a new piece of MIDI information, it generates a random value. And here, uh, one of those random values is mapped to the feedback of this note echo. This is a MIDI note echo, not uh, an audio note echo. 
and one of them is wrapped uh, is mapped to the uh, delay so that's the delay time here and the feedback here so what that's doing is every time one piece of uh, uh, MIDI comes in here it's uh, duplicating it that piece of MIDI a random number of times and a random number of milliseconds and then or each of those notes that's being MIDI notes that's being generated by this is then being randomized with a velocity plugin input output set to 64 and the random set to 64 that's why we get this the random you can see the the random value happening there so we're getting a whole bunch of different MIDI th notes uh, being triggered here um, and that's then going into an instrument rack. And in this instrument rack are four instances of uh, the same recording. Oh, yeah, we can see here. Yeah, four instances of the same recording. And that is an eight-minute long recording, all in C major, of uh, some cello doing some, some flageolet stuff. So what happens is each time we have more random stuff happening here. Uh, so each time a piece of MIDI comes into the start of this instrument rack it's triggering it's going into it's being divided into four so the one piece of midi comes in is going into four places and it's going into the four different iterations of this uh, eight minute long recording and each of those iterations uh, is the same uh, but as you can see it's just it's just the same thing four times panned hard left and right for two of them but each time the MIDI comes in here, we're having some more random things done. And we're randomizing the s uh, sample start. So we're randomizing where in this whole eight minute recording we're going to play from. from. And we're randomizing the length. We're randomizing how long it's going to be played. So each time one piece of MIDI comes in here, we are getting four different versions of a start and length uh, for a piece of audio to come out. So if I, can I just trigger one of these? Yeah, so if I trigger this, you could hear we're getting four, two panned hard left and two panned hard right, four different versions of this eight minute long thing and how long it's being played for is usually around somewhere between six seconds you can see here I've constrained the values so starts at 50% up the top and only goes to 82% down here so we're getting sometimes we're getting uh, these very specific phrases and sometimes we're getting just these random sections of this eight minutes of uh, cello recording in there so, that's not quite it for the cello channel. We also have uh, four different MIDI clips. And as you can see, some of them are missing that instrument rack up the top. That looks to be the same with the instrument rack. And then uh, an empty one. So when a, the empty one is playing, there's uh, no cello being triggered. And these are all uh, done with follow actions. So. Uh, in the follow actions that's in the launch here. So we can see that 100% of the time it's going to play any any uh, of the other clips. So, or any clip actually at all, not other. Other would be any other clip other than the one that is currently playing. That's uh, that one there, but any. So any means that it can also repeat the current clip. So what it does is it plays through this perhaps playing one or two of these as a, with the chance down at 4%. Um, and then it chooses any of these clips to play again. So you're getting this constant random generation of, of cello phrases that's happening there. Uh, now, uh, moving across, we have a synth here as well. And as we can see, again, we've programmed in some notes into the MIDI part, but those notes are only 6%. That means 6 out of every 100 times it's triggering one of these notes. So again, very randomly, let's have a look at what is happening. And here, here is an adaptation of one of my previous tutorials, uh, which uh, I will link in the description below as well, on um, the generating uh, random gestures, how to get able to, to make... Um, 
hum, uh, melodic fragments for you. Um, but essentially, very quickly, what we're using again is uh, the expression control. So a piece of MIDI comes in here. Each time a piece of MIDI is triggered, it's randomizing a bunch of these things. So the beat divisions on the note echo, uh, randomizing uh, the delays on the note echo, randomizing a chain selector, uh, presumably in here, randomizing this chain selector, uh, and randomizing the attack on the synthesizer as well. Uh, the note echo is yeah, generating more MIDI notes. The random here is saying, yeah, let's either put that note the same or we can put it up an octave or, or down an octave. That's what the buy here is saying or anything in between. So we're generating a flurry of chromatic MIDI notes each time a note is triggered here. So it means notes are not happening so often, but when it does happen, instead of it just being a ba, we get a blah, 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 blah of, of notes. Uh, lovely description there. Uh, and because we're randomizing the choice on the chain selector here, what that means is each time a piece, each one of those notes, every single one of those notes that comes out of this random uh, is, is, going, is going to be split. Uh, and according to that, so each time each time a note comes into the expression control, uh, we're randomizing the chain selection. So that means that each blah, 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 blah of notes is going to go through one, two, or three of these chain selectors. Um, so one of these chain selectors is just putting it up uh, two octaves, so we get a very high, high, high sparkly collection of notes. One of them is going up one octave, and one of them is not doing anything at all. So we, we're getting every now and then a blah, 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 blah of notes, and each of those blah, 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 uh, is being split into one of three octave regions. And then have a uh, MIDI quantizer. Uh, now what that's doing is saying no matter what of those chromatic notes that are being created by this random plugin here, no matter what of those chromatic notes existing, let's make them all into a C major scale because uh, I wanted this, this one to feel quite tonal. Then we have more random stuff happening here. So each each of the each of the notes that's coming out of this C major scale is randomizing uh, the, the the gain on the synthesizer, randomizing a filter frequency, again randomizing more note echoes, some more gestures, feedback on the note echo, attack on the synthesizer, and uh, delay stuff. So we're really creating a whole sequence of chain events based on one MIDI note entering this system. Again, for a more detailed breakdown of this particular uh, signal path, um, check out my previous tutorial on uh, random uh, melodic fragment generation. Uh, moving across, we have another channel here, a sub-channel, very similar but much simpler version, and again, just very infrequent, uh, one out of every 10, nine out of every 100, 9% of the time these notes are going to be triggered. And when they are triggered, it's again, creating a bit of a flurry of notes. Um, and again, we're quantizing all of that into C major to keep things together. Uh, we have another channel here, the FX channel. Uh, and again, broken into drum racks. So we have uh, what looks to be um, uh, with the MIDI coming in. Uh, in this case, I've, I've uh, used the random, the random plugin again, and what this is doing is taking a an incoming MIDI signal and randomizing the pitch. And I've said scale degree one, so one semitone, and it, uh, five choices. And in this case, it's only adding because what I'm doing with this is I'm saying, I presume uh, this will only be middle C here. Yeah, oh, no, sorry, C1. C1 being the, the start of my drum rack. But each time C1 is being triggered, it might trigger five options. So C1, C2, C... Uh, no, C1, <laughs> C sharp one, D1, D sharp one, and E1. So it could be any of these five notes. Uh, and each of these is, uh, again, you can see a simpler inside a drum rack. And 
each of these is again randomizing some stuff. In this case, the samples start and the, and the length of that sample. So similar to what we were doing with that long cello recording, it's just randomly playing bits from this recording, which is a recording of some effects, uh, which, uh, let's see if I can trigger something here. I'm just gonna keep telling it to trigger until we can hear what. Nope. Uh, we're also triggering some silence, of course, so it's also meaning that less and less of stuff is happening. Sometimes the start point is in a silent part. Um, uh, and then, so there's three of those, three versions of those bloopity bloop effects. Uh, another one that's some crying whales, uh, which I suspect is a sound that I made on the, on the modular. It's also not wanting to trigger very often. Uh, yeah, and uh, some whale song, which is also happening over here. So this is the final channel. Uh, and that sounds like this. So this is more of a constant sound bed that's happening. Uh, it looks, it's a, it's a long recording of some, basically a feedback loop uh, I recorded on, on a modular setup. And as you can see, it plays through and then it sort of loops, loops this end section here. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. It's a three minute, three minute recording uh, from the modular. So this, what this means, and this is, you can see quite low in the mix compared to the other, other bits as well. So what this means is that when nothing else is being triggered, uh, there is something there. There is some kind of sound happening in the background. Yeah, so... The way I was approaching this, uh, as I just talked through, was uh, chain events. Uh, every time a piece of MIDI is triggered, uh, that sets off a chain of events, but those events don't happen so often. So the, 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 the MIDI signals are really low in the, in the chance, but each time it does happen, it means that it creates a whole sequence of events. And those sequences, as you saw, were, were randomized. So it, then it, we, we create a, a sound field, a sound bed uh, that continues changing itself. It continues evolving, continues making new patterns, new patterns from sampled recordings, uh, but then new patterns from the synthesizer as well. So yeah, that's a breakdown of this project, uh, as I said. Shout out to all the Patreon subscribers. You can download this whole project on your Patreon, on my Patreon, um, and uh, you can sort of, yeah, go through, replace these cello samples with your own samples, uh, or continue using cello samples. Do what you like. It's your project now. Um, there we go. Please leave any uh, tips or comments uh, down below if you found this helpful, uh, things you might like in future tutorials. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you there.